Let's talk about the folks that are around us. Let's talk about life's experiences. All the folks that come in and out of our life of different sorts that produce different results. I've always been fascinated by Paul's last words in the Bible, chronologically. The last book that he wrote, or letter, to be more correct, is 2 Timothy. He's in prison, in Rome, and he already has intimations from God, premonition, this is it. So he's writing to Timothy, and now he's at the very end of the letter. Do you know this part? Let me read it to you. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. Isn't that something, how God can show you when your time is near? A lot of people don't believe that, but if you believe in the Bible, you can believe in it. I have fought the good fight, I finished the race, I have kept the faith. And on and on. So these are his last words, and now... These, this next paragraph or so has fascinated me because it talks about, I think, a representative assortment of the kinds of things we all face. You may be going through it now. I'm going to say something, hopefully, to help you. Or you'll go through it next month, next year, or you went through it. Let's look at it together. He says in verse 9, Do your best to come to me quickly, for Demas because he loved this world, has deserted me. So the first name we're focusing on was Demas. Who was Demas? Well, he was a co-laborer with Paul. He's mentioned in other letters in the New Testament. And here, when Paul needed him the most, he deserted. He turned tail and ran, left. The word in the Greek there, Demas has left me, uh, uh, forsaken me, very strong in the sense of left somebody in the lurch. I mean, just, just, you're hanging by a thread and the guy says, later for you. That's what happened. That's what Demas did to him. So you and I are going to have in life experiences where people close to us are going to say adios in a good way or a bad way. In a good way, it's just part of God's plan. But sometimes you get deserted, turned on. Someone tries to split a church. I talk to pastors who have associates that they lift up and encourage, and then the guy starts working like Absalom behind their backs, splits the church, starts another one like a mile away. I mean, like, how do you sleep at night? Tries to take half the people, causes dissension. Oh, my goodness. Demas has forsaken me. This is worse, having loved this present world. In other words, the lure of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, Demas got caught by it, even though he was a minister. That's why, let him that stands take heed lest he fall. We all got to work out our salvation with fear and trembling every single day. Lord, keep us close to you. So what do we learn from this? We learn it's going to happen. There will be disappointments. But notice that Paul doesn't go off into left field like, what am I going to do? Demas is left. It is what it is. People can leave you, but the Lord will never leave you. People will disappoint, betray even. But we have to keep our spiritual composure and say, you know, he did that, but the Lord is with me. I'm not going to let that rattle me, distract me, discourage me. I hope I'm helping someone today. Don't get discouraged and distracted by weird things that people do in terms of leaving the battlefield and leaving you in a lurch. Number two, he says in the next verse, verse 11, uh, only Luke is with me. Only Luke is with me. Luke, who wrote, was a doctor and was a Greek, Gentile. He wrote the Gospel of Luke, and he wrote the book of Acts. And this Gentile, who would have no use for a Jew like Paul, and Paul, a zealot Jew, who had, he grew up around people who called Gentiles dogs. That was the prejudice on both sides. Anti-Semitism is older than dirt. Here Luke is like this with Paul. 
Isn't it a blessing to have a coworker who's loyal? I think of people who have worked alongside me, helped me. I try to help them. We work together. Oh, what a blessing they are. I'm thinking of one or two now who have, over the years, gone to be with the Lord. Oh, my goodness. I miss them. I thank God for them. So what can we learn from this? Treasure people that God puts next to you. Thank them. Tell them how much you love them and appreciate them. Don't be insecure. Tell them how much you appreciate them. And thank God for them. You know, when you start out with the Lord, you thank God for like toys. You thank God for a better job. You thank God for whatever. And the older you get, you thank God for people. The beauty of people in your life makes you cry because God gave you a Luke. So thank God for that. Remember that. I want to do a little sidebar because Paul says here in verse 13, When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. When you come, bring the cloak I left with, Carp uh, with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, bring them especially the parchments. By the way, I, I've learned somewhere along the way that the cloak that he left was this thing that just had an opening on the top, was made of very strong fibers, so much so that if you took it off, they could actually just stand it up. <laughs> you know, I don't know how comfortable that was on skin, but it like stood up like, there's my coat, my cloak. And it was cold in that dungeon. And you didn't get three squares a day. Someone had to bring you food and bring your clothing or you rot and die. Who cares? So the thing that stands out to me here, though, is bring the books, especially the parchment. At the end of his life, having written a good part of the New Testament, Paul is saying, I still have to dig. I still have to study. I still want to learn. I want to meditate. Bring the books and especially the parchments, which now brings, uh, let's apply that to ourselves. Are we digging? Are we still searching? Are we, you know, my, my late friend Warren Wiersbe, the great Bible expositor, he would always challenge me that way. He was, I don't know how old, in his 80s, still writing books, digging in Scripture. Jim, you know what I saw today in, in Numbers 11 or, or 1 Timothy 2? And, and I just, what a marvel. Always hungry, always wanting to learn. A lot of us, we preach a couple of good sermons, we go in retirement. We don't even read the Bible anymore. Never, by the way, never steal sermons. That's not nice. Don't steal sermons. Wiersbe one time told me that he went to a church in Florida, and the guy, not knowing Wiersbe was there with his wife Betty, the guy preached a sermon from one of Wiersbe's books. He preached Wiersbe's sermon, Wiersbe's points. And then as they walked out, he was at the door. And he had to greet Warren Wiersbe and his wife after having stolen one of his sermons. Listen, as good as the sermon might be, God will give you what you need, what I need. Don't rob sermons. Don't imitate. Trust God to give you what you need to say. But anyway, on Mondays, we need to have our own services to someone minister to us. Be digging, be searching. I built up quite a library because people minister to me. I need encouragement. I need to learn different versions of the Bible. Maybe Greek and Hebrew study helps, although I don't know the original languages. Commentaries, books of sermons, anything that will minister to you. And by the way, no matter how a book is recommended, if you read the first 30 pages and it's not speaking to you, go on to the next book. Not every book is meant for every person, I've learned. Don't force your way through a book that someone else is so great. There are certain books that hit us at certain seasons that are meant to be read and digested. Finally, Alexander the coppersmith, metal worker, did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. You too should be on your guard against him because he strongly opposed our message. So now we have a deserter, Demas, a solid friend, solid co-worker, Luke. We got books and parchments, which are really good friends. And now we have enemies. We got a villain. We got an, a really strong opposition coming from Alexander the metal worker. Just two things about it. He warns Timothy about him, like this guy is bad news. 
You're allowed to say that. Some people are bad news. They fight the gospel. They fight us and all that. And, and love isn't blind to the point that we don't know there's troublemakers around. So he tells uh, Timothy, be on guard. Watch out for this guy. Be very careful. He has a track record of a lot of damage to the cause. But notice what he says here. The Lord will repay him. And in the Greek in that sentence there, it's not like the Lord will repay him. How about that? Every dog has their day and his is coming. Not like that. That would be vindictive. No, the Lord repays everybody at the end of the day. He leaves Alexander the metal worker, his enemy, he leaves him with God. God will take care of whatever has to be taken care of. Otherwise, you know what happens? We get bitterness in us. We get acid in our soul. You know, oh, that's so, listen, when you're a leader, you're criticized. People will hurt your wife or your family. They don't care, they can be brutal. If you take that personally, you'll really not be able to preach well. It's very hard to preach Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I show how you miserable. It's not good, it's not good. We have to let that go and it's a temptation to all of us to hang on to bitterness, unforgiveness. Let God take care of them at the end. Oh, I want that grace in my life. And finally, 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 at my first offense, verse 16, no one came to my support. Everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me, the message of the gospel might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. There are some times in life where you, you learn, has it ever happened to you, when no one's there. What you're going through, your wife doesn't understand. You can't talk about it. It seems like no one's there for you. Don't say it can't happen. It happened to Paul. Paul said, because listen, the persecution was so great at that time, probably under Nero, that Emperor Nero, that the other Christians like, if I show up and stand with them and give character reference, they'll go, arrest him. Now I'm in a dungeon. And Paul understood. May it not be held to their account. You know, people are weak. Why? You've never been weak? I've never been weak? So he doesn't take it so serious like, whoa, I thought they were friends. No. May the Lord not put it to their account. But nobody was there for me but the Lord was by my side. One thing we can be sure of, the Lord will never leave us or forsake us. Whenever we live for him, work for him, he will be there helping us and blessing us every single mile of the way. Let's go out and minister with that positive attitude of faith and gratitude to our Lord. Amen. Amen.